it's not happened that you were born there. You were born there because the universe put your kind of people in that planet or whatever it is. Oh, boy. Um, well, yeah. Just Stop because, it. yeah, you had a bad experience with a guy named John doesn't mean you can't date any guys named John. Uh, right or wrong? I don't know. All my friends that are teachers that had kids were like, I can't name my kid this name because... I had a kid in my class 10 years ago. That was the worst. So it, I mean, it sticks with you. I think this gets back to the fear thing. Like people got to get over that. You know, it's not yeah. fair to the next John. Well, John will find someone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. John will be just fine. Um, well, I like it. I like that uh, you're aware of Scorpio. Scorpio discrimination needs to be talked about more. Scorpio lives matter. And we need to talk oh, about no. it. <laughs> you did not. They do. Scorpio guys and girls need love too. Uh, so good. Go for. I want to hear this. I want to hear. Just, just take it slow. Go out with the Scorpio. Have a nice time, and then you let us know. Uh, all right. Two more. Last year, I said I wasn't going to date until I got in shape and felt my best, and that never happened. So I never dated. Not this year. You need to want me as I am, guys. Come and get it. Good. I was gonna say I don't like that last resolution. I love that she's just saying, "Come and get it." Yeah, get it. good. Coming. I assume this is a girl. Could be. This is a Could girl. Be. Could be. Um, people do do that a lot. I'm not going to do this for because until I do this, I'm going to lose ten pounds. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. Yeah. And what you're really doing is just giving yourself excuses not to go out at all. Yeah, I did that for a long time. Yeah. Almost nobody cares about those last five, ten pounds, whatever you think your is preventing you from doing it at your best, and we're all going to get to some point anyway. So yeah, dive in. Um, if you don't feel great about yourself, they probably can make you feel better about yourself than you're going to on your own. Yeah. The right person. She probably had an ex-boyfriend or something that told yeah. her she needed. To I've run into way. a lot of that, like people that are in really good shape and they had a, uh, girlfriend, even wife, boyfriend, husband who are, who constantly harped on their mm-hmm. body. I had that. Even people that were in fantastic shape. I'm like, really? And they're like. Yeah, and I'm, that would just make that would make me feel terrible. Yeah, I, I'm just it's just a body. Like I would worry about someone's I, I health. Know that, I know that, and I'm but... like like compared to most people, like I don't, and that like that's such a like normally that's a projection thing. Something about them. Let's yeah. focus on what's wrong with you, and nobody's going to focus on what's wrong with me. Yeah, that's true. that would just be awful if I was somebody who really did take care of myself a lot, um, and that happened. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I'm in better shape than you are. Like, right. it would it would drive me nuts. So uh, good for you. Um, you don't need to wait till the perfect time to date because the perfect time is now. Yeah. 2021. Sounds like a commercial. It is. That was good, yeah, too. that was good. Too corny for you? No. All right. The last one. This sounds like a rule, but it's my resolution. I am not going to drink before, during, or after a first date with a guy. Not two glasses of wine to relax while I get ready. Not two margaritas while we get to know each other. Not a shot by myself to chill out after and calm down. No drinking date one in 2021. Wait, she was drinking after by herself. Yeah. Okay. But this sounds like like she just does it on the first date and then when she gets comfortable, she doesn't need all the drinking. Again, could be a he. Very judgmental. It could be a he for sure. That Absolutely could be, could be a he. And a lot of guys do this. A lot of people do do that. They're nervous before the date or they habitually have a glass of wine or two while they're getting ready. I do that. Well, and I then you're to. too far sure. down the drunk road that if you have two or three drinks at the on the date, you're shit faced. And that's a bad. That's a bad look. Yeah. yeah. You can't. I think uh, yeah, that's a great rule. Well, I would start. You're like, yeah, I would start by just eliminating the the pre date drinking and the after Perhaps and the after. Just cut it down. Like to if one you're drink. that wigged out about the post date that you have to go home and have a shot to chill out. You're dating the wrong people, there or so you're not questions. dating, or you're so amped up from it. Maybe stay out a little longer. I don't know. Yeah, what do you I'll doing? Just bring them home. What? Her I, home. Don't know if it's a guy or girl. Oh my! Uh, this is yeah. It's very weird. That's I. But I think eliminating the pre date drinking. A lot of people say like, well, that's easy for you to say. I cannot go into a date so nervous and I need a drink to calm down. Yeah. A lot of people do. I get that, but you have to. Oh, it's always about moderation and cutting it back. If you normally have two drinks before the date, and people do drink more now before dates because they generally Uber. Yeah. It used to be you would drive to the date and then 
whatever happened. And then you have a couple and then you drive home drunk, whatever. But people now do Uber more to the dates, which which is enables it, it is. But it enables more drinking yeah. before the date. So people I mean, you ever been on a date with somebody who showed up drunk? Yes. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, I absolutely. It's the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> if I if you're already slurring your words or like looking through me. And we haven't even gotten to dinner yet. Like, oh, or if somebody, or if like they got there early and and they had an empty one and then they're on their second one, like they didn't wait for you to have even the first one. That like they had to just, sorry, I just wanted to get going. And they had oh, one and a. What are we at a, a frat ha- party? <laughs> get going? We got it fired up. Jesus. That's when I say, oh, I'm sorry. And I changed my name. <laughs> Wrong yeah, person. A lot of this, a lot of these are just bad dating behavior. And I'm not sure they even uh, fall into the category of resolutions, but whatever you got to do, whatever you got to do to make a change and sort of these are just healthy like we're going to, we're going to flip the, th- yeah, they're all healthy. If you sort of get a, you know, a lot of the dating behavior is sort of a subset of the way we live our lives and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think all of you who wrote these in and we really did get a lot of these, I could have done, you know, 20 more. Um, is I am aware I'm doing this and I'm going to make a conscious effort moving forward to do that or to not do this. And there's nothing wrong with it. That's a really, really good thing. It's the first step. Yeah. And if you don't pull it off by, you know, January 9th, you, you got 11 more months to go but and gotta, many more years. Pivot. You just got to make a little, if it's little not pivot. working, just half tweak step it a little to the left. Little jab yeah. step to the left. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, these were good, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Yeah. It's fairly Thanks painless, for having right? Me. Uh, where can everybody find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, the social vine or on my personal Instagram. It's Stephanie Llewellyn with four L's <laughs> with four L's. <laughs> so listen, how long did I'm it trying take to for, get how married long, how, to get rid of it? Really? Uh, we brought this up last time you're on the podcast. You're not aware of Doug Llewellyn, the most famous Llewellyn. No, he, I'm, he was a host of the people's court for a long, long time. No. And I'm the only other Llewellyn I'm aware of is Llewellyn tarot cards and witchcraft brand. That's it. With four L's. That would yes. be like, as soon as you said that, I'm like, yeah, that's a lot of L's. It's Welsh. I don't know. It was Welsh. It's that's my Welsh accent. Is, that, no, is it? That's like, a no, that's leprechaun not. accent. That's not Welsh at all. Every UK accent I do gets accused of being a leprechaun. That was accent. leprechaun. It's, it's like English, like. You don't know how to it's talk with British, like no, I no don't know what you that. don't know how to talk with like a British accent. Well, that's not that's great. Yes. What's Welsh? Welsh, Welsh is like yes. Sean Connery, kind of. I have a friend that lives in Wales, and he said they are about half American, like regular English, and half like half British. Oh, so it's like dialed back Brit. It's British, yeah. All right, we're gonna have to look into that. Princess Diana. She was well. She was the princess of Wales, but she wasn't Welsh. No, she wasn't. But that's like <laughs> the the dialect. Okay, is that the word? She spoke very so Diana. very quietly. Me and Charles are having a problem. You sound like that's Mrs. my prin- doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> right. Accent is I'm gonna work on my Princess <laughs> Di uh, accent. I was at a party once, and Princess Di was there, and uh, she was the biggest star in the room of a lot of famous people. Like, and I'm like, that's got to be weird when famous people are staring at you for her it's royalty. I get it. She was like a whole nother thing. It's like, oh imagine. my god. Anyway. Um, as far as us, like, share, subscribe, and please review this podcast. Your reviews mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem. Our live tour schedule. Talk about resolutions. We are firing it up for 2021. Our first two shows are in South Florida. For the third year in a row, we are kicking off um, our live tour, our eighth season. There's our eighth season of going around the world with the Great Love Debate. Yep, we're turning the lights back on and going out. This is our third year in a row where we are kicking off our annual tour in South Florida. Why? Because it's warm. No other reason Take than me that. With you. And uh, it's a great um, place to, because uh, there's a lot of fucked up daters in Florida. Uh, go to <laughs> greatlovedebate.com and check out those things and get your tickets. It's going to be really, really fun. We're rolling it out. We're doing another one of those uh, virtual, for those of you who cannot get to South Florida or one of our shows, um, one of those global uh, virtual interactive Great Love Debate shows. I think it's on January 20th, 20th or 21st. I'm not sure. It's on the schedule. They're really fun. Our friends at Deepin produce these. They're really well done. Um, so check it out for that. Because as always, at the Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time.